Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm laughing because, I mean, I shouldn't be laughing at this, but first off, thanks, everybody, for joining me again for another Wednesday afternoon of great conversation and, and reality. But some of the things people send me, I, I'm just like, actually, should I be laughing or, sh <laughs> or should I be upset? You know, what's great is that you actually have control over your own self. Do you know that? I think people forget that they actually have control over what goes out in the world, what comes back to you, how you react to things, how you decide you want to walk the world. You have full control over the way you interact within the world. So that's one thing I want to just put that little bug into your ear. And I think somehow... Hey, everybody, I, I appreciate you all showing up here today. And I want to, I want to, uh, you know, the topic of today is you can't change your sex, <laughs> which, which kind of is funny to me that it's even a conversation, <laughs> but there are people out there who actually think you can change your sex and they are um, misguided and they are uh, spreading false hope to people who think they can change their sex uh, because someone said they could. <laughs> we don't live in reality anymore, people. I'm trying to pull you back here. I'm trying to pull you back into reality because here's the deal. And one of the one of my favorite um, one of my favorite sort of uh, spiritual sayings is it, it's called the Serenity Prayer. Right? We, you learn it in AA. And and uh, and when I was getting sober, my one of my favorite things was um, the Serenity Prayer because it says, you know, accept the things you cannot change and change the things you can. Right? So it's a really, really profound, profound thing that it's saying. And in the reality of living life. There are things you cannot change. There are things you will ne that are out of your reach that are out and that there there's okay for one sex, but for another thing, the uh, the way people interact or the way people come at you or the way people say you cannot control that. You cannot and the wisdom to know the difference. You know, I have it tattooed on my leg in Chinese. <laughs> I don't know why I chose to put it in Chinese, but I have a serenity prayer tattooed on my leg because I, I believe that was one of the most profound things that I had learned in when I was getting sober. You know, you have to learn to, to accept the things you cannot change, right? Change the things you can, know the things you can't change, and understand the difference between them. And once you understand these things, wow, it's powerful, people. It's so powerful to know this. The only control you have in life is you. That's it. You don't have control over anybody else. You don't have control over what other people say. You don't have control over what other people do. But you actually have the control of how, are, how am I going to interact with you right now? If you say something crappy or mean to me, how, how am I going to interact? It's up to me. It's not up to you. It's, it's completely up to me to say, oh, I'm going to get angry at you right now because you misgendered me. Oh, my God. The whole world is falling apart. You called me she when I'm a he. That little thing right there that is happening with a very specific population in our world right now. It's a young, young people. It's not necessarily older people. It's a very young people who are getting so pissed off when you misgender them, they flip the fuck out and the whole world is done. Those are people who do not know the difference of the things you can change and the things you cannot I cannot change the way you interact with me. There is no, I cannot change the way you think of me. If that makes sense. If you're going to think of me as a female, there's nothing I can do about it. I can either accept it, which is the truth. I am a biological female. So on some level, it's the truth. The thing that would upset me is that you're not respecting my choice to live as a man. So now whose fault is this going to be right here? Is it going to be my fault for getting mad at you because you're not taking on what I believe. And I believe that I want to be a man. Okay. I don't think I'm a man. I want to be a man and I want to walk the world as a man. 
and I live in reality and know that I am not a biological man. I am a transsexual man. And that's why these little teeny twists are so important in this whole conversation that we are trying to have today. Yet both sides, and I'm not going to blame one group of people, are pushing against each other and nobody, right? Mm -mm 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 -mm. What happens when you do this? Mm -mm -mm. Are you breaking through anything? When I punch you and you punch me back and I punch you and you punch me back, what's happening? What's happening? Nothing. Nothing is happening. We're at a standstill. We're actually at a standstill because you keep punching me and I keep punching you. Instead of me saying, okay, dude, go ahead and call me she. If it's going to actually help you to see me and we can break through that and you need to call me she for some reason, it's in your brain. Why would I get mad at that? Because it's helping me on some level break through to you that I need to live as a man. And if for some reason you don't understand that, it's not up to me to get mad at you. It's up to me to say, okay, that's cool, dude. I, I totally get it because I'm a biological female. And this is why you cannot change your sex. So I don't get mad when you call me she. I don't because the reality of it is I am. <laughs> I know it's kind of messed up, but the reality of it is I'm an actual female. I, I'm, I'm never going to deny that to you ever. So what does that help in this situation when you keep telling me I'm not a man, you're a she, you're, I'm only going to call. What does that do when I say, okay, I'll tell you what it does. It immediately stops this. It immediately stops me and you punching each other because I'm willing to say to you, okay. It's not going to kill me if you call me she. It really is not. Because if me and you are walking through Disneyland and you say, my friend, she or her, she, she wants a Coke. And people are going to look at you like you're completely insane. That's on you. That's not on me. And that's what I know also in reality. People are going to look at you like you're insane if you call me she. But my point being here is this. I can't control how you think. I cannot control what comes out of your mouth. I cannot control how you react. But what can, what, what is it that I can control? Me. Me. So I hope that you all are good today. And, you know, I always very much appreciate you showing up because I, I do feel that, you know, you all have these great dialogues with me. And, you know, I, I wish we could actually speak to each other because sometimes it's hard for me to look at <laughs> what's happening over here. But that being said, you know, these uh, conversations are important. And I'm sure there's people here today who don't necessarily agree with me on what I just said. And that's the point I'm trying to make to you, okay? I'm trying to make to you that it doesn't mean anything to me in, in, on some level. I respect your opinion. I respect, even if you don't see me as a man, I respect that. I actually do. It doesn't hurt me. Why doesn't it hurt me? Why does it hurt little Charlie over here who gets so mad that you're misgendering him and he can't stand it and he's a biological female who wants to live as a man just like me but little Charlie's 25 and I'm 60. So little Charlie's pissed off that you keep misgendering him. Are you doing it on purpose? Possibly. But the problem is, is that Charlie is relying on you to affirm him in his idea of what he wants to present to the world. You, you see that? It's not my job in any way, shape, or form to validate any of you, nor is it your job to validate me. You only validate yourself. Do you, do you know that? You only validate yourself. And I think what's happened is so many people have become in this space because of this, right? That we need your validation in order for us to keep climbing this space. So for example, if I have 1 million followers on this platform right here, 
that gives me a bigger voice, but it also gives me on some level a responsibility to be saying things out there that are set in reality. But I don't think people see that at all. I think I don't think people see the responsibility they have when they amass a large group of people and what they put out. So I I, I do believe that what I put out is not going to be accepted by people inside the transgender community. No way, shape, or form. But I take responsibility for it because I live in a space that's different than many of these people who are speaking for the transgender community. I don't speak for any community. You, you I hope you all know that, right? I, I don't speak for any community. No way. I speak for a person myself who transitioned many, many years ago and have lived in an amazing space, but transition isn't easy. It's still not easy. But what I want the world to know is the truth around what it means to be a transsexual. And what I see coming out of this mantras and these ideas of trans is that you do change your sex and that biology is not real and that women can be anything. And these are all lies. These are not set in truth, not the truth. I mean, not my truth. There's the actual truth, people. There's a universal truth. The sky is blue. Isn't that a universal truth? Right? There's a moon and a sun and an earth. Isn't that the universal truth? And biology is not fluid. No, you're exactly right, friend. It is not. It is not fluid. People use this idea of intersex, right? Which is actually rude. I know intersex people who do not feel happy that they have been sort of lumped into this trans debate. Intersex people are not trans. Now, if an intersex person wants to identify as a trans person, that's on them. But in this reality of all of what we're talking about, intersex people are not trans. They're intersex. And that's a very small group. And it's a medical condition. It is not an identity choice. Different. We need to get back to these ideas of, yes, intersex, yes, Kylie, intersex people are being used in this trans debate, right? And why is trans even a debate? What are we debating? We're debating what? Somebody's idea of what it means to be trans? Well, it's not somebody's idea. There's a reality and a truth of what trans is. Transsexualism is a mental disorder. I will continue to tell you that. If it wasn't a mental disorder, you would not be thinking you're a man when you're a woman. That's a mental disorder. If you think you are something you are actually not, that's a mental disorder. I have an actual mental disorder. I think I feel better, and I do. I actually physically do. But I think, right, that I need to be this way in order to, which I do. But that's a mental disorder. I wish to God that I didn't have this. I wish, I wish to the universe that I was born male. I wish I was born male. I do not wish I was a trans person. I do not want to even be in this space. I don't like it. It's not fun for me. It's not something that I wake up every day and I have trans joy or whatever the heck you guys are talking about, trans euphoria. You're making shit up. You're making shit up. And you are pulling young people into this ideology. That's an ideology that trans is this thing, that trans is beautiful, that tra- no, it is not. You will never, ever change your sex, ever. Now, come at me. Prove me wrong. I have people out there tell me, oh, Buck, you've been on testosterone for 30 years. Your biology has changed. What? Are you a doctor? Are you a scientist? Because I have many biolog- biologist friends who are like, dude, that's actually impossible. You cannot change your sex no matter how many steroids you put in your body. My physical, inside my body, my genitals are biologically female. 
You will. I don't care how euphoric you become. I don't care how amazing you think you are. I don't care if the whole world tells you you did. You did not. You never changed your sex. So my next question to you is, why is that important? Why is it important? Yeah, you can't change your DNA and your development. That, that is, it's absurd that people even say it. But, but here's my question. Why do people want to, why are people in this new trans space? Because the older trans people always knew. We know our biology. We're, we, we're always very connected to it. We, we never felt like, you know, we called it a sex change because on some level, you know, yeah. But we know in our brains, we didn't change our sex. If we changed our sex, then we wouldn't have to be trans. <laughs> it would be something else. We would not be trans anymore. If we actually changed our sex, we would be, right? We would be men and women. And we're not. We're, we're not men and women. We're transsexual men and women. It, it, it just, you know, it just feels like I'm going around in circles constantly. It feels like I'm going around in circles. That's right. If someone dug up, digs up my grave, but I'm going to get cremated. But if someone digs up my grave in 50 years or whatever, they're going to be like, yeah, that's a female. Looks like a dude, but that's a female. So why are we lying? I guess my question to you out there is, why do you think we need to lie, not, not only to ourselves, but why do we need to lie to the world about who we are? Why do you think this, because we didn't do it before. It's only been in the last 10 years that the narrative has changed. Anyone can be, here's the narrative now with trans. Anyone can be trans. You don't need gender dysphoria to be trans. Trans is gender euphoria. Um, I, I don't even know. Blah, 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 blah. You change your sex. No, 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 blah, 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 blah. All of it is a lie. Why? Why are we lying to a bunch of people, especially young people? I don't care the adults in the room. If you're going to make that choice, you better do your research. And I don't feel sorry for you because you got Google. I didn't. And I did it. But you better seriously do your due diligence before you decide to take hormones and cut your body apart because it is not going to come back from that ever. So I guess my que yeah, my question is here is cluster B mentality here. I, this is good. Thanks, Jennifer. Cluster B mentality has been at work for a long time, grooming the enablers so that when they went for the kids, people would have already conditioned them. Ah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So we've been sort of conditioning not only younger generation, but on some level, people who I actually thought were intelligent. I mean, I'm going to say it. I have friends who I actually thought were way smarter than what they are saying to me. I'm like, dude, what? You didn't change your sex. I'm talking to this fucking dude, trans guy, and he's telling me, Buck, you're spreading misinformation. What? What part of misinformation am I spreading? You can't change your sex, dude. Go, go get a, go get a, anybody out there who is trans, who believes they changed their sex, go get a, go get a chromosome test. I dare you. I dare you. Go get a chromosome set test. Because that's the end all be out. If your biology changed from that chromosome test, then I'll eat my words. But it did not. It did not. There's nowhere, there's no evidence of that ever on the face of this earth. And right. And what does it mean to change your sex? It's not possible. What it means to change your sex, sex being biology. Sex is biology, right? You can't change biology. I, I will forever until I die and my dust goes in the air will be a biological female. It doesn't matter though. It's not, it doesn't matter. It's not hurting me. And in fact, it helps me to acknowledge my transition from a female to living as a male. I did not have a sex change. I went from living as female, okay, being born female, living female, to changing my appearance in order to walk the world as a male. But it it's real basic, people. Why do I think, Joey says, why do I think this is so hard for people to, to accept? Because what the other person said up there, I think it was Jennifer said, because people have been brainwashed. People have been, have been sort of conditioned, right? We can condition. So for example, pharmaceutical drugs, painkillers, right? 
painkillers. We, 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 we have this uh, absurd amount of painkillers in this country and people just take them because why? Because the doctor says it's okay. The doctor says here, takes Oxycontin, you'll be fine. The pain will go away. And, and what happened? What happened with Oxycontin? Bam. Bam. It wiped people out to this day. Killed so hundreds of thousands, I think. I'm not really sure if anyone knows the numbers. But a shit ton of people got killed from Oxycontin, fentanyl, all of it. Because the doctor said it's okay. Yeah, dope sick. Oh, there's a season two. Oh, so good. If no one's, if anyone isn't watching Dope Sick, watch it. It's phenomenal. But that's what I always lay. I lay these two sort of ideas over top. This transgendering thing and pharmaceutical painkillers. I, I lay it over the same thing because it's the same thing. The doctor's telling you, oh, your son is trans. But how do you know my son is trans? How do you know that? Well, they just said they were. Or they just said they felt like a boy. What? So the doctor is diagnosing a child because a child said, I feel like a boy. That's the diagnosis now. It's no long-term, no understanding. So on some level, the same, here's some Oxycontin. You have pain in your back. Here's some of this. Take this. You'll be fine. When we know goddamn well, you won't be fine. It's the same with kids. You think... Telling a kid that these magical drugs who are going to stop their puberty and stop them from looking like a boy is going to actually help them move forward in the world? No. It's going to destroy these kids. You cannot change your sex. Why wouldn't you want to help this kid get out of that mentality? And why wouldn't you just let this kid play with the gender? What we did back when I was a kid. My parents were like, be a boy, dude. Who cares? When you got to go to church, you got to wear a dress. But be a boy, who cares? We're not doing that. We have this idea now that when somebody says there's something, especially a child, we have to take it at face value. What would you say about intersex people, Buck? Well, I did. Intersex people are not trans. They're intersex. It's a medical condition, just like transsexualism. Transsexualism and intersex, they're both medical conditions. And intersex is not trans. So intersex sits over here and trans sits over here. Transgender is an umbrella term, and that sits over here. I'm talking about actual medical conditions. Intersex people don't want to be lumped in with, with trans people because they're not trans. You can't choose to be intersex. Oh, wow, Bill. So Bill says, hey, Bill, I was handed it like candy back in the 2005 for my spinal oxy. And can't get more than a muscle relaxer these days. I would take a narcotic if it, wow, because you got addicted, friend. Totally get it. I have a very addictive personality. I totally get it. It's why I would never touch that shit. Like, it's so sad. So let's talk about how the pharmaceutical companies get people addicted to these drugs, whatever it is. It could be a ADHD drug. What's that? Adderall, which is speed right? They give you painkillers for pain. And now what are we doing with our pharmaceutical companies? We're giving out hormones to young people. Why are we giving hormones to young people as if it's just this easy thing? Do you know what hormones do? Why are we acting like hormones are not dangerous? Why are we acting like hormones are just reversible? Like, Go ahead and take some testosterone, kiddo. If you don't want to take it anymore, we'll just take it back from you. That is not going to happen. You see this? Do you all see this? <laughs> do, do you see this? <laughs> do you see this face? <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because it's absurd. I, I can never go back. Even if I shave off my beard... Okay, even if I shave off my beard, my hair is not growing back. It's never going to grow back. All of the structure of my face, my body. If I took off my shirt right now, you would see a male body. 
There is no doubt about it. You think that this is all hormones, people. All of this. Hormones. How are we acting as if hormones are so, like, nothing? Like, just water. Like, here, drink a glass of water, kiddo. You'll be fine. You don't want to drink any more water? You don't have to drink it. Nothing's going to happen. Where is everybody's head in this? We are talking about children. And when you tell a child who says, mommy, I feel like a boy or mommy, I feel like a girl. And when you tell them, okay, we'll change your sex. You're lying to that child. I see you all. I see you people out there who have trans kids and who are having five trans kids how is that possible do you actually think that is statistically not even who cares about statistics do you actually think that's possible can somebody actually have more than one trans kid no bullshit bullshit i call bullshit on it because how come it never happened before don't you see, oh my God, it, it's so, it's disturbing for me as a transsexual person to see the growth of a young generation latch on to something that they are being lied about, that they are being um, completely led down a false path, that eventually they will figure it out. They will get to a fork in the road. The path they are being led down will have a fork in the road. And when that fork in the road, when that child comes to the fork in the road and realizes, oh my God, I can either go back to living as a girl or I can continue on this trans path that I really know is not for me and I shouldn't be here. But if I decide that I want to go back to living as a girl, my whole community will jump down on me. I will lose all my friends. I will not be liked anymore. What path do you think that child's going to take? Think about that for a minute. When kids rely on not only their friendship base, but they also rely on validation from others. We all know that. We were all kids. You, you get into a group of friends and those friends validate you. And then you're like, you all are like-minded in that group. Like, like I was in the punk rock group, right? Or I was in the athletic group. But what happens now when you come to that fork in the road and all of a sudden there's something that wakes up in you and you're like, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. It's really profound when you think about that. We are putting children into a space to make these psychological choices that will have such an impact on them for the rest of their lives. You don't think these detransitioned young people are going to have to live with this for the rest of their lives? The ones who chose to have top surgeries and got their breasts removed and now decided they are no longer trans and they took the other path. They lost all their friends. Not only that, they don't have a support group because everyone hates detransitioners for some weird reason. Then they're left with their bodies who are no longer their bodies. Their bodies that they have to look at on a daily basis. I, how do I know this? I talk to a lot of them. I listen to them. You, don't, you think suicide rates are going to be high for kids, you're not transitioning. You fucking watch. There are no trans kids killing themselves. You're all lying about that. You're lying. Where are the kids? You keep saying that. You keep saying there's a genocide. You keep saying that there's trans kids killing. Where? Where? Not that I want it, but don't lie about that shit. That is insane that you would even make those remarks when it isn't true. Thanks, Scarlett. How does a child know that they are trans yet still believe? <laughs> that is excellent. You are every you are right because they're living in a fantasy world. And who's giving them this fantasy? 
Who tells kids about Santa? Adults. Where did the story of Santa come from? Adults. Where's the story of trans coming from? Adults. Feeding them the same narrative. The same story. Because Santa's a story. Being trans is a story. Unless you are actually diagnosed and you go through a system, it's a story. Okay? No child should ever be saying I'm trans. You know what you know what a child's going to say? This is what a child's going to say. I feel like a boy or I feel like a girl. Now we can go somewhere from there. But if a child is saying I'm trans, they're being fed this. They're being given this terminology. No child should ever say I feel trans. Ever. I am not secure in who I am. Oh, oh thanks, Carol. And the choices I'm making. So anything that confronts and challenges me in this is an act of war. So, oh, okay. Well, you just, you, just, you just said that. I'm not secure in who I am and the choices I'm making. That's the key, Carol. That's the key. We always have to look inside our own selves. We, we've got to understand that what we put out is very important. It's why I really sit here with my words. I'm not just flinging stuff out at the world. I would never just do that. I understand I understand the impact my words make. I do. I very much do. I'm not going to just fling stuff out there. But I think a lot of people these days, here we go. Suicide rate is there after transitioning. After. Not only that, friend, what about detransitioners? I see a lot of them and I hear a lot of them tell me about the fact that they don't, they're not happy with themselves. They don't want to be where they're at. How do they get back? Yeah, I think I have seen Alexander's detrans story. I think I'm trying to get them on. All those stories are sad, people. All of them. Hey, friend, thanks for joining us. Yes, please, please support Jen Specht. One of my favorite organizations around all this. They have great, great information. If anyone in this room is a parent or struggling with your kid, I, I highly, highly recommend Jen Speck. Why would we, why would we tell a child they can change their sex when you can't? Why would we tell anyone they can change their sex? You know, that might let me let me let me tell you this. 30 years ago when I transitioned, my doctor didn't, my doctor did not say you're changing your sex. He never said that to me. He said, you are going to be in a lifelong situation. It is why I'm going to show you how to inject the testosterone. In fact, my doctor showed me how to inject the testosterone for six months before he let me go. Today, these kids go on Folks or one of the other stupid ass websites and they are given a prescription and told to go to YouTube, Planned Parenthood, go to YouTube and learn how to inject the testosterone. How is that even legal? How is that legal? That's, that's inappropriate. That's malpractice. That's not teaching somebody. My doctor taught me how to do the whole thing. He never, ever said to me, you are changing your sex, ever. Never did those words come out of his mouth. Never did I actually think my sex or my bio, I should say my biology, never. I never thought that. Even without being told or any of that, I just knew what I was doing was creating an appearance. I'm creating an appearance for you. And that works. This actually works. Because I don't think anybody in this room would call me she. Would you? And if you did, it was what I said earlier in this space. You would only call me she out of your own principles, right? Because some people just feel like they can't call me he out of principle. And that's okay. It's okay. It's not, you know, your, your validation isn't the reason I walk this world. And I just want to be able to walk the world with you. I don't want to walk the world in anger and pushing against you, right? If we have to cross the street from each other, that's okay too. If we're walking down the street and you don't like who I am, just cross the street, right? If you don't like somebody, cross the street. You don't have to punch them in the face because you don't like what they're saying. 
the world we live in today has become so toxic and insane that if you don't agree with somebody, you can't be. I can be whatever I want to be as an adult. And then there's that. There you go. You call everybody she because you're gay. Remember, hey, girl. Everybody did that. Grew up with that stuff. Hey, girl. Is that considered misgendering now? It's not misgendering. Misgendering also is bullshit. Let me tell you about misgendering. It's completely gaslighting. They came up with all of this stuff to gaslight us all. If you don't call me by my preferred pronouns, you're transphobic. If you don't do that, no, that's not true. Remember about intention? What are my intentions? I misgender people all the time. And I'm actually transsexual. I've misgendered people all the time. You look like a girl. I called you she. I apologize, my friend, but you actually look like a girl. That is not my fault or my problem. If you get misgendered, you're going to have to grow some. You know, we're not teaching people to grow a pair. It's so insane. And, and, and it, it, it just is, that's the point. You've got to grow some. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what community. People will either hate you, say shit to you, punch you in the face. I don't care where you come from. There's no group of people that are fully liked in this world. And the people who are successful and the people who walk the world happy understand this. There are things you can change and things you can't. There are things you must accept and things you don't have to accept. There are things that you just can never, ever change as hard as you want to. If you look physically like a female, but you identify as a male, that's on you. It's your choice to identify as male, not mine. I do the work, my friend. And do not tell me, what about people who cannot pass? Well, what does that even mean to me? What does that mean? Cannot pass. Does it mean you're not making an effort? Are you actually making an effort to pass? Or are you walking around with a beard and a dress on? And when you walk around with a beard and a dress on, that's on you. It's not on me. Don't you dare expect me or anybody in this world to accept your choice of living authentically of what makes you happy. And you expect the whole world to just drop their panties for you. Ain't happening. Nope. I don't care. It's not transphobic. Intention is everything, people. Intention. Oh, I think I'm going to take a cruise to Alaska. <laughs> yeah, it's narcissistic. It's egotistical to expect the whole world to change their views for you, for little old you. Good luck. My God, people, I've been walking this world as a tranny for 30 years. People have done such insane things to me. You would, I, I mean, if you want to know Trampa stories, I'll tell them to you. But insane things. If I was in this new age of transness, I would have never made it to where I am today. Ever. Ever. That's what's different these days. My therapist helped me to develop tools. I needed to walk the world as a woman. We put in the work. There you go. There you go. That's all we're saying. Put the work in. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna help these young people not cry at every fucking turn, not not be able to hold down a job because somebody misgendered you. Get the fuck up, dude. If you want to come to boot camp, come to Buck's boot camp. I will tell, I will teach you how to walk this world like a badass. But if you're not willing to put in the work, get out of my face because I don't have time for this. Wah, I can't work eight hours because I keep getting misgendered. Are you kidding? Let me tell you a little story. As y'all know, I travel. I do all kinds of stuff. I've been doing this shit for a long time. As you all know, I don't have bottom surgery, okay? I have my female ge genitals still, 
Okay, whatever. Who cares? I'm perfectly comfortable. Not a, not a problem. I could talk about it all day long. Doesn't make me feel any less of anything. It just makes me feel like me. I feel like me, if that makes sense. I don't feel like anybody but me. So here I am traveling the world. And remember back in the day when they first started doing the scanners? Remember the scanners? You have to stand, now you stand in and it does that thing. And, you know, I, I was with a person at the time who was like, we can't go in that. They cause cancer. Right? <laughs> the spinny thing causes cancer. I'm like, are you sure? She's, yes, we can't do it. And I'm like, fuck. So you have to opt out of the scanner thing, right? So the scanner thing is going around and she makes me opt out of it. I'm like, okay, I'll just opt out of it. So when you opt out of the scanner, the roundabout scanner, you now have to be hand scanned, right? And as you know, what I just said, I don't have what men have, okay? So I have my original plumbing. And so uh, the guy pulls me over and I don't pack, I don't do anything. I just walk the world free, okay? So there I am at the airport and the guy pulls me over. And um, of course, cause I'm a dude, right? He's gonna give me a dude guy to do it. So the dude is doing me, wanding me, but. I think at one point he has to take his hands, right? He has to take his hands and, and pat me down and do this, right? And do this. And then he, he makes me spread my legs, right? Here we go, kids. And he's patting me down on the side. And he go, they go inside of your crotch, right? So they do this thing where they go wham, right? They go wham, wham. I think they do it fast so it doesn't feel like whatever they're tripping on. And he goes like this, wham. And I see a weird little look in his eye and then he does it again. And he has a weird little look and he looks at me and I'm just like this, I'm going <laughs> whistling like, <laughs> I'm just thinking this is awesome, man. Do it again. So he does it again. And this time he puts his whole hand in my crotch. He goes like this, bam, no balls, no penis, flat. Barbie flat, <laughs> Barbie bump. He's like, his eyes are swirling and he's just looking at me like he doesn't even know what to say. Remember, this is years before this trans nonsense. And he goes to me, I go, oh, it's a vagina. I, I just said it very natural, very normal. And he goes, I go, it's a vagina. <laughs> The dude is spinning out and I feel so empowered. I'm not kidding. I did not feel, I did not feel it was transphobic or, oh my God, the whole world. I did not feel any of it. I felt powerful because he did not know what to say to me. When I said, it's a vagina, that was it. <laughs> he was like, get out of my face, dude. <laughs> and that's the point I'm trying to make to you. Old school versus new school. Old school versus new school. The difference is I have to live in the real world. If I'm not going to have a penis and I'm going to look like this and I'm going to let some dude pat me down and I know damn well I don't have what I need to have down there for it to look normal. I could pack. I create packers. I, I could actually pack, but I don't want to. And because I don't want to, I have to be responsible for when the TSA agent pats me down and doesn't see anything or feel anything and gets completely freaked out by it. It's my responsibility. I don't care that he got freaked out and I don't care about any of it. I find it humorous. Again, it is my responsibility, not yours. And I know exactly what happened. What do you think? I could put all kinds of things in there, but I'm not going to because I don't want to. And I don't feel comfortable with that. And it's not my problem if you feel uncomfortable. It's actually not. It's not my problem. You're working in TSA, you're going to have to deal with all kinds of bodies. There are men who actually have tiny little penises. And maybe that's what I had, right? So the reality of it is we're not all the same. Not all bodies are the same. Not all the way people walk the world are the same. But my point with that story was, what if I was born or what if I was transing today? Okay. What if I was transitioning today? 
what would this person do today if that happened to them? Would they be calm, cool, and collected? Would they be so pissed and call everybody transphobic? Would they sue TSA? Would they get the dude fired for being transphobic? See that? I didn't have any problem with that dude. He might get fired. But I wouldn't, that's the difference between me and today. I would never get a dude fired because he didn't understand what he was patting down. I would never do that. I found it humorous on, on some level. But that being said, I would never get somebody fired unless they really were like, so, like punching me in the face or doing something absurd, right? So I think one of the problems I see today is this idea that everybody has to roll over for you because you're trans. Everybody has to move out of the way for you because you're trans. Everyone has to respect you because you're trans. No, they don't. No, they fucking do not. Are you telling me as a trans person, you respect everybody? Are you telling me that you're going to respect somebody that you disagree with? No, you're not. You don't. None of you tra new trans people do that. But you turn around and expect everybody to drop their panties for you. What? What? It doesn't work that way, people. And I don't understand why we're giving this. Why are we treating children in a way that says, I'm right, you're wrong. Why are we teaching children to have these manners that say, I'm right, you're wrong? Why? I don't understand why we would do that because that's not real. That's not real. And why are we telling children they can change their sex when they can't? They can't. Today's trans movement does not reflect transsexualism in any way, shape, or form. It's a movement. Remember that. I don't come from a movement. I come from a medical condition. And where I come from is wanting to teach you out there why I needed to do this. Because now we have people who are doing this who should never be doing this. You don't think on some level that affects me? Of course it does. When I see young people doing what I did willy-nilly and being told that they can just stop whenever they want, that affects me. Because then I have people like you look at me like I'm a groomer, like I'm bringing people into this, like I'm recruiting. No, I, I, am, I am actually against children transitioning, 110% against it. But that's not what people out there see when this crazy narrative is being pushed that there are trans kids. I get lumped into that. Hey, thanks, friend. I appreciate that. Why are we treating children like adults and adults like children? It's unbelievable. I say it all the time. We got to take the keys away from the kids. We, we've given the kids the, 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 the run of the house. We've given the kids the run of the house and told them, go at it, kiddo. No way. They've destroyed the house. We left them alone. The, the adults walked away and left the kids to do this work. And they destroyed it. They destroyed it. It's completely 100% the adult's fault, not the children. Those detransitioners are kids, people. They are not 30-year-old people like me when I did it. These are young children taking a path of having surgery done to their top, which means removing their breasts. Some of these young people have even had hysterectomies. What doctor in their right mind 
would give a 16-year-old biological female a hysterectomy who has no health problems. Do you know that they won't even give a biological female who's not transitioning a hysterectomy? Do you know that? A biological female has to beg for it. Yet a trans kid can have it instantly if they're trans. Y'all don't see how insane that is? We are operating on children. 16 is a child. 18 is a child. And everyone's just acting like it's not happening. If I see one more person in the LGBTQPP poo poo community say, we're not operating on children, you look stupid. You look like you're hiding something because you are operating on children. You are giving children irreversible surgeries, hormones, and hope. You are giving kids false hope. They will never change their sex ever, ever. So now what happens when they grow up being told that they're a boy when they're really a biological girl and then they grow up and they're 22 years old because this is what's happening and they go, oops, mommy, what? I'm not a boy. I'm a girl. Mm -hmm. Whose fault? I, I do feel sorry for parents. I feel so sorry for these parents. I believe parents are being put into a space that they should never be put in ever, 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 ever. How many parents in the room? Do I have a lot of parents? I'm a parent. Do we have a lot of parents here? See, look at, look at this right here. Look at this. One doctor even told my friend she needs a husband in order to get a reproductive surgery. His permission is needed. What? What? Do we live in like 1950? What? Look at all of these parents. And I appreciate you showing up, parents. I really do. I really do. I really hope I help you. I really hope there's something I'm doing right here to help you see things in a more sort of unbiased way and a more sort of nuanced way. Thank you all you parents for showing up because you're really my target. You're my target in a way that says you might be struggling with a kid right now, okay? You might be struggling with a kid because it's all over the place, right? An eight-year-old, excellent. I have a 10-year-old, excellent. So I know that at some point, one of your kids might say, I'm trans, might come home with this ROGD crap, right? And I want you to be around some sane. I consider myself very sane. I might not be. (laughs) I'm considering myself sane, which my parents might disagree with you. But that being said, I I want you to see some older Okay, I'm not the only old elder person out there. I, I can lead you to some other people. Yeah, hold on one second. I missed this one. So here, hey, thank you, friend. Thank you, Candy. I couldn't get my tubes tied when I was 20 after a very dangerous birth because I might change my mind. That's what they say. But they're ruining, it's, un- look at what she's saying, people. This is a fact. This this woman right here is showing you. They would not even let her have a hysterectomy. Yet they'll give a 16-year-old a hysterectomy like that if they say they're trans. What part of that equation, what part of any of that is okay? You should never be giving a healthy 16-year-old person any form of irreversible surgery at 16. This you don't see. Boobs, deal with it, kiddo, until you get to be old enough to deal with it yourself. But as a parent, don't you dare send your child down that spot. That You will not be happy. I guarantee fucking to you, you will not. Let your child struggle a little. Let them struggle. I'm a transsexual. I struggled as a kid. My parents never gave me hormone blockers. They never cut my tits off. They never put me through any of that. They got me into psychological help. 
They put me in, in therapy, psychology. I even had to actually go to a psychiatric ward. I am begging you, get your kid into therapy. Do not, do not crumble under there. I'm going to kill myself. You're being taught that shit. We shouldn't even be having those words in this conversation. But as a parent, I'm telling you right now, you know your job. It's to, it's to make sure your child grows up to be an awesome human. That's your job as a parent. I'm not going to tell you how to parent. Everybody parents differently. Every, but what I am going to say is this, when it comes to trans, push back. Do not give in. Your child will love you more for it. Worst case scenario is they are trans and you decide to take that route. But you don't want to make that choice with that child. And it's not the right choice that will hang over your head forever. It will not hang over your head if you made the wrong choice and they are trans. That can be fixed. But what cannot be fixed is irreversible surgeries. I have one of the most controversial books that I'm going to show you. Do you all know what book I'm talking about? <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer, <laughs> you are 100% right, my friend. Thank you, friend. I appreciate it. 100% right. And your job as a parent, friends, that's right there. Where is it? Where'd you go? Not that one. My job. There you go. My job is to bring out my kids' potential for them to be happy, healthy, and confident. That's your job as a parent right there. Nobody should get involved in that. No school, no church, no religion, unless you invite it. But other than that, you are the number one person and you have the responsibility to help your child get to that next level. If your child says, I'm trans, okay, kiddo, right on. Let me get you to a doctor. And not an affirmation therapist. That's not real, people. I'm telling you right now, it is not. It will not help you or your child. It will indoctrinate your child into being trans like that. Do not take your children to affirmation therapy. You take your child to an actual therapist. And if you need help, genspect, G-E-N-S-P-E-C-T dot org. Right? Oh, yeah, I'm a total turf. There's no doubt about it. I'm a turf. So here you go. Did you want did you want to come up? Did you want to come up? Do you want to say some more besides that? Because it doesn't hurt my feelings, just so you know. I'm a total turf. So what? So what? Did you want to remark on that a little bit more? It's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny that people just throw that out. And? Is there any other thing you want to say? <laughs> because it doesn't make sense to me. Wah! You're dealing with a 60-year-old tranny. You're dealing with a 60-year-old tranny. You think you can throw words at me like that? Let me just, let me show you what it really means to be trans. Doesn't hurt my feelings. I don't care. I side with J.K. Rowling. She is one of my very great friends. She is not a turf. If you want to call me a turf, you go right ahead. And I will actually display it for the world to see. Trans women are not women. Trans women are trans women. Trans women are biologically female. Should I go on? Trans women should not be in women's sports. Why? They're biologically male. Trans women will not be biological women. They are biologically male who want to live and look like women. Does that make me a turf? Oh, God. This person. Buck is a transphobe. What? How old are these people? This is probably an adult. Do you know that? This is probably an adult. I love, I love trolls. 
I love trolls. <laughs> I live for trolls because they're idiots. <laughs> trolls are my favorite. They're actual idiots. Turf transphobe. Watch the next one will come out will be bigot. I already know what you're going to say. Then the one after that will be Nazi, even though I'm a practicing Jew. This, this, the fourth one, what is it? Come on, give me some more, kids. Give me some more. Bigot, transphobe, turf, right? Calling an actual transsexual a transphobe. It's genius. It's genius. I'm actually even going to take a picture because everyone take a picture. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually taking a picture. Cheese. Because <laughs> it's actually brilliant. It just, I can poke holes in all of it for you people. I'm willing to put my myself into the, into the firing range, right? I'm, I'm willing to do it because I can call it all out. There's not very many people my age here in, in the trans space. I can call it out. Easy. Oh, fascist. That's right. Thank you. What are the other ones, kids? So, so far, this person has called me a transphobe. Called me. I'm an actual transsexual, by the way. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you can't make this shit up. That's how I can blow a hole in all of their rhetoric. That's how I blow a hole in it. It's rhetoric. Because they know they can't stop me. Do you know that people fear truth? Do you know that? People actually fear truth. This person fears the truth. We're coming for you, my friend. We're coming for you. We're no longer going to play your stupid little game ever. We're not. We're building an army to save the children. None of us give a shit about what adults do. We are going to save the kids from your grubby little hands your grubby little disgusting hands where you think children can change their sex and you will never, ever take responsibility for what is about to come. The tsunami of young people scarred physically, mentally, and emotionally because people like you are so weak and such followers that you do not step back and listen to the experts. And you think name throwing shit like that means anything to me? You lit a fire under me. Every single time any person calls me those names, you light a fire, which means you will never, ever stop me from saying what I need to say. If you get to say what you get to say, I get to say what I get to say. And you will never, ever stop me until not one single child is ever put in a position to make a life-changing choice that destroys their lives. And that's what I'm going to leave all of you with today. I really value you. It means a lot to me that you see what I'm doing. Very few times do I get these crazy people in. Who cares? They actually prove my point, right? It proves. You all see it. It totally proves my point. These people are struggling because the truth is coming out. The light is peering through. Do not get discouraged. I beg you, do not get discouraged. It is not going to stay this way. The more me and you speak out, the more me and you show up, the more those cockroaches go back into the dark. Cockroaches hate the light. I tell you all the time, we are shining a light. Go ahead and shine a light on cockroaches and watch what happens. They scurry. We are shining a light, my friends. Do not fear the truth. Do not fear saving children. Do not fear pushing back on an ideology that is not only destroying my space, but is destroying your space and is destroying humanity. As a transsexual person, this has done wonders for me. But I did it as an adult. 
There is no such thing as trans kids. Those are kids who are dealing with dysphoria, mental health problems, anguish, anxiety, depression. Should I go on? Get them off the goddamn computer and get them out into the world. Stop letting them play on video games and be so isolated that they don't know what the fuck is going on. And then their buddies are telling them, you're trans. I see it as an elder. I know exactly what's going on here. These kids are being indoctrinated by crazy nuts who need the kids to validate their insanity. As a transsexual, I do not want to see children's transition. I want to see them not transition. I want to see them become fully capable human beings who do not have to take drugs, who do not have to have surgery, who do not have to change their pronouns or change everything that they feel that they are not every single day. We as adults are playing into that shit. Instead of telling kids, you're okay, kiddo. We are telling these kids they are not okay. And the only way they will be okay is if they join the club. We cannot do this to kids. We cannot do this to kids, people. I'm not kidding. My tears are for the kids. My tears are because we are destroying a generation of young people who just need to be told, you are okay. There's something going on. We can help you, but you don't have to have surgery. You don't have to take hormones. You don't have to be lifelong medical patients in order to be happy. Why do you think kids aren't happy today? Because they're seeking something you're telling them they can have that's not true. They will never, ever accomplish changing their sex because it's not true. You are lying to them. And it's so disturbing for me to see. It's disturbing beyond belief that you think it's okay to do these drastic measures to mostly young girls who are having body issues, who are having issues with being popular, with their bodies, with their minds, with how they present to the world, the pedestal that they are put on, how they have to act, how they have to walk, how they have to be. We do not do the same to men. Shut up. They are not trans kids. Shut up. You, my friend, are an idiot. Now you got me pissed. You come on my fucking shit and you call me these stupid ass transphobic names and then expect anyone to have any. What are you here for? You're just here to troll me. You're here to troll me. F off. There's no such thing as trans kids, you weirdo. You're one of the weirdos who are so insecure about your own self that you have to use kids in order to validate your fucking ass. You're disgusting. You are a pig and you're disgusting. And you will not get your hands on these kids as far as I'm in this space. I'll find out who you are, Seth. You're going to come on my channel. You're going to throw all these things at me. You better be prepared, my friend. I don't care what you think. These are not trans kids, you sick freak. I can only imagine. I can only imagine what you think you are doing. You're pathetic. You are a child abuser and you don't know shit. Do your homework, my friend. And if you want to have a debate with me, bring it on, friend. I'll bring you on right now. You want to have a debate with me? Bring it on. I'll show you so many statistics, it will make your fucking head spin. Because I know what you're doing. You're reading pink news. And you're reading from all the same bubble that you all read from. I'm not.
John. Send me an email, John, if you want to have a debate. I'll bring you on and I'll debate you. And with that, my friends, I'm going to go and work out in the gym and get a little bit of this off of my chest because I'm sick and tired of John's coming in here and calling me all these names and then acting as if they're pro trans You literally called a transsexual a transphobe, you weirdo. You called me a turf, a transphobe. You're an ag peer. I know it. I know it. Have a beautiful day. John, reach out to me. Reach out to me. Go ahead. Reach out to me. You're not going to get these kids. You're not going to get these kids. You're not. Nope. Here we come. Have a beautiful day, my friends. I'm going to leave you all with this. I'm going to leave you all with this. You see, you see how I get? For the kids. I'm sick and tired of these people touching the kids. You fucking weirdos. Leave the kids alone. Mm. I did not take my own advice. I did not take my own advice. I let somebody get me mad. Instead of understanding that I'm in control of my own feelings, I am in control of my own feelings. I lost control. Because John is what's wrong with this world. And John is the reason we sit here fighting for children. Because John is the one who is creating the rhetoric out there. I apologize because I will not tolerate child abuse. If me and you don't understand that these kids are vulnerable and being totally trolled by weirdos like John, we are lost. Hasn't it always been about the kids, my friends? Haven't we always protected the kids? Haven't we always had the desire to protect children? What happened? We are surgically altering the bodies of children in the name of trans what is happening? That is not trans. That is an experiment. One of the most controversial books in the transgender war. My great friend, Abigail Schreier, wrote this book. If you are a parent and you are struggling with understanding what's going on, I highly, highly recommend this book. It is thoroughly researched. It has things in there that are so important. I don't understand why the transgender community calls this transphobic. It is not. It is not transphobic. It is a book that will give you a different view. Okay? That's all. That's all. They tried to ban it in Israel right now. Unbelievable. I love you guys a lot. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, thank you so much for caring about the kids. Thank you so much for helping to raise the trajectory of my channel. Thank you so much for seeing the hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Because that's why I'm here. To show you the hypocrisy of this transgender BS. Have a beautiful day. Spread love. Put stuff out there. What you want to see, you've got to put out, okay? you got to be participating in this in order for all this nonsense to end. I'm sending you all love. If you need me, you know how to reach me. You can go through Seth and all of that. But remember, this is about the kids. Have a beautiful day. And I'll see you all later.